within the conservation sector, uh, questions are often asked as to what does fell condition actually tell us about uh, the biodiversity of a particular area. And uh, this particular study, uh, for instance, is trying to actually provide answers to some of these questions. Uh, which means if I were to go into a particular project area, for instance, and done a, a fell condition assessment, and then I've got uh, scores that say this particular area is in good fell condition, does that perhaps mean that uh, that particular area is, is also high in species richness or species diversity? What if the, co the condition was actually poor? Does that mean that area is also a poor uh, in species uh, diversity? Just a bit of background. Species richness um, is the oldest and simplest concept of uh, species diversity, as most of you uh, will know. However, there has been a problem in measuring species diversity in the sense that uh, it is often impossible uh, to enumerate all of the species that are in the uh, biological community, uh, especially in the tropical regions, which are very uh, species rich. So some uh, very intelligent ecologists came up uh, with methodologies, different methodologies, to try and estimate the total number of species found in the community. And one of those is a uh, JetNAF estimate of species richness, which I have used uh, in this study. And that is described by Professor Krebs. And uh, fell condition assessment techniques are a popular means of uh, rapidly determining the grazing potential of grasslands. Uh, as a result, they are widely applied uh, across Southern Africa. And nature conservation is also showing interest in these uh, techniques as a possible means to rapidly assess the biodiversity value of grasslands. However, for this to be possible requires a correlation between uh, fell condition scores and plant species richness uh, to be established. There is also a perception, especially among conservationists, that uh, fell condition assessment techniques are actually agriculturally biased. And as a result, uh, the fell pollution assessments derived from these techniques are also sometimes regarded as having little or no value for biodiversity. And the reason for this uh, perception is that the current fell condition assessment techniques focus mainly on grasses as the important determinants of fell condition, <coughs> and they end up lumping all the fops into the increaser 2 um, functional group of species. And this particular group is uh, the most desirable from a fell condition perspective. Plant diversity is determined by various factors, which include climatic, edaphic, habitat diversity, etc., whereas fell condition is determined by factors such as species composition, uh, vigor of palatable plant grass species, basal cover, as well as soil surface condition. So out of these four factors, only species composition can be objectively measured, which means the other factors have got a degree of uh, subjectivity in their measurement. So due to this uh, reason, fell condition assessment procedure is based on uh, species composition. And uh, according to the current fell condition assessment techniques, fell that is dominated by decreased species is regarded as in good or excellent condition, depending of course on the level of abundance of the decreased species present in that uh, vegetation. Uh, on the other hand, fell dominated by increased species uh, is regarded as in poor uh, condition. So the aim of this study was to investigate whether <coughs> a relationship exists between grazing fell condition and herbaceous plant species richness. And the objective uh, were to assess fell condition of the 12 sample plots and to determine herbaceous plant species richness of the sample plots, as well as to test whether a relationship exists between fell condition scores and herbaceous uh, uh, plant species richness. This is the study area uh, map showing you the study sites. This is the N3, and further north, that is the Hilton College study site, showing uh, star symbols, and then we've got Sidara, south of Marisburg, that's Payne's Field study site. Methods, fell condition data were collected from the 12 sample plots using modified wheel point technique, and species richness data were collected using 50 by 50 centimeter quadrats. 
and a total of uh, 25 quadrats were sampled per plot at 3 meter intervals for species richness as well as 200 step points were sampled per plot um, at uh, 1 meter intervals for fail condition. Uh, this is sampling design showing you just how the sampling was actually conducted. The little dots you see show you the fail condition sample points and the squares around them show you the 50 by 50 meter, 50 centimeter quadrants. The arrows just show the direction in which uh, each uh, transect was actually sampled from the center of the plot. Data analysis, fail condition data were analyzed using the benchmark method as described by Hadi et al. And the estimate of species richness was calculated using the JACNAF estimate of species richness described by Krebs. So the correlation analysis was undertaken um, to determine the relationship between species richness and fail condition using uh, Statistica and Excel. The results, first of all, starting with fail condition, the horizontal lines show you the benchmark score for the um, uh, this vegetation type, which is a municipal grassland. And the first three sites were actually surveyed at uh, the Institute study site. As you can see, the two sites, site number one and three, had the excellent fell condition scores, and they actually exceeded even the benchmark score for this vegetation type. But uh, the one site, uh, site number two, had uh, a poor score of 17%. But interestingly enough, this particular site also had the highest uh, species richness compared to all the other uh, study sites that were actually surveyed. The lowest fail condition scores were recorded within the SIDARA study sites with the lowest score of 2%, the highest was 33%. And looking at the Hilton College study site, um, fail condition score was slight, slightly better, but these scores were still poor relative to the benchmark uh, for this vegetation type. Coming to the relationship between um, species richness and uh, fell condition scores, here uh, I broke down the species richness by grasses, and you've got these blue squares are showing you the fork species richness, and total species richness is shown um, in these solid circles. Again, if you look at the relation, this first curve, you do see that uh, the correlation was negative, perhaps showing us that there was uh, a negative relationship between fork, uh, grass species richness and fell condition scores. Similar pattern you can see with the fork species richness. There seems to be a negative relationship between that and uh, fell condition score. <coughs> now, the total uh, observed plant species richness, here again, just a similar pattern, there's a negative correlation. And you can see these two sites that had uh, the highest fell condition scores uh, at uh, the base to the study site, it's sitting over there. But you look at the corresponding uh, observed species richness, it's nowhere close to the fell condition score. Again, that site that I told you at uh, basically it was a very poor, 17% of fell condition. The species richness was quite high uh, compared to that 17% fell condition score. Again, perhaps showing us that there was a lack of relationship between fell condition and species richness. Here I took the observed uh, species richness and used jackknife estimate of species richness to calculate the total or to estimate the total of species richness for these uh, communities. And as you can see, again, the pattern is very similar to the observed species richness. There is a lack of relationship. As you can see, the coffee coefficient there. And those two sites are still sitting there, the ones that were actually in excellent fell condition from Bainsfield. But look at their corresponding uh, species richness, nowhere close. And that site sitting there, site number two, nowhere close to that. But just most of the plots are actually clumped here fell condition between 80 and 100, I mean, it's richness between 80 and 100, but the fell condition is around uh, 30 something to 40. Again, just showing us a lack of relationship. Here I took the fork species richness and uh, plotted that against the grass species richness. Here we got uh, somewhat a positive correlation, but uh, this correlation is not very uh, strong. It's still significant, showing that there is some sort of uh, relationship between the fork richness as well as classes. Discussion and conclusion. This study found no relationship between the grazing fell condition and species richness, which means therefore that uh, grazing fell condition cannot be used as a surrogate <coughs> for species diversity or vice versa. And should the correlation have been found, for instance, between the classical fell condition scores and plant diversity, this could have enabled rapid assessments of uh, 
plant diversity, uh, for instance, by technicians with very basic uh, botanical knowledge. In other words, there, have, there would have been less necessity for the detailed uh, and time-consuming plant analysis. Unfortunately, that was not the case. Uh, I think this could also have enabled the use of the wealth of historical fell condition assessment data, which has been collected over the years and available out there to review the patterns of land use as well as degradation in retrospect. <coughs> uh, I do think that uh, these findings have implications, for instance, for decision making pertaining to the development applications that are evaluated by state agencies on a regular basis, in the sense that if private landowners were to use the fair condition status of their land to decide on whether to keep their land in its natural state or to put it under plantation forestry, or some other form of development, that would risk the loss of um, perhaps areas that are valuable for biodiversity, as you have seen, that the poor fell condition scores do not necessarily mean that that particular fault is not valuable or is poor in diversity. Same thing applies to high fell condition. You could have those areas being high in fell condition, but their diversity could be low. Um, I do think also that the assessment of uh, the fell in the context of biodiversity still requires different approaches to the current fell condition assessment techniques. These could include diversity indices and other methods that are available. Out there. And the positive correlation that was found between the grass and fox species richness, I think, suggests there is a possibility for use of grass species richness, perhaps as an indicator of fox species richness. Although I think we still need further investigation. And the fell condition assessment techniques, um, I think, are still relevant in protected areas for determining grazing um, capacities as well as adjusting stocking rates. As you know, we're keeping herbivores in <coughs> small reserves that are fenced, so we still need to monitor the grazing impacts of this on diversity. And I think it's also relevant for monitoring changes in herbaceous uh, uh, species composition over time. I would like to thank the following people for their various uh, contributions. Thank you. Thank you. We are doing very well in terms of time. I have questions. I will start from the front. Uh, Petros, sorry. Uh, I'm curious on your graph.